Thank you so much. We have Chef Jimmy Graves here in studio. Again, like, share, comment this video. We're giving away some passes to the Texas Renaissance Festival. If you've been before, go ahead and put in the comments if you had a good time, what was your favorite part. Mine just so happens to be the turkey legs because you know the turkey legs are going down at the Texas Renaissance Festival. We were having some technical difficulties on our Facebook, but it looks like everything's working now. So sorry for... Going live, not going live, going live. But again, like, share, comment. We're giving away some passes. I'm going to go ahead and kick it on the FM, and then we're going to start talking to Chef Jimmy. Here we go. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. It's 10 o'clock. Hopefully you're having a good day. We got Chef Jimmy in studio. What's up, Chef? Hey, how are you today? Is that okay if I just say Chef? It, it is. That's, that's what I prefer sometimes. Chef. Yes. He's making it happen. Yes, it is. You brought some really cool stuff in studio. What do we have here i'm enjoying this and i really want to well, taste it we brought you some some hot sauce that we make we bottle ourselves it's a habanero and then we have a traditional hot sauce with it as well we also brought you some venison chili i forgot earlier we brought some jambalaya and there is some chicken and sausage gumbo so there's a lot of stuff going on yes. how many people can this feed um comfortably three or four if you don't want, if you want to be uncomfortable, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all freshly homemade. Um, we make it in the kitchen, actually, about five minutes away from here. All right. So that would be Q's catering. Is no, that's tastefully yours catering. Tastefully yours. We're, so, we're a family. You have a lot going on. Yes, we do. You have a lot going on. <laughs> Can you list all of the things that you have going on? You know, yes, it was funny because I was talking to Ethan earlier. And I was sharing how we were messaging last night, and you're like, well, what are we going to talk about? Right. And in my head, I was just kind of like laughing. I was <laughs> like, you have a lot going on. What do you mean? What are we going to Everything. We'll talk about everything. So okay. what all do you have going on? Okay. Um, I own Tastefully Yours Catering, Q's Catering. I own Bay Area Entertainer, which is an online publication. We share just good news. We, we do a local advertising with it. I also do a children's ministry called Kids Cooking Club. I run about 20 Facebook pages. Uh, <laughs> Ten of them are for nonprofits. Yeah. Uh, just a few other things. I mean, it's uh, I, I work with the food bank when I can. Yes. Did you say 20 Facebook 20 pages? 20 Facebook pages, yes. I thought I ran a lot of Facebook pages. <laughs> Apparently, I, I, I don't run that many. Well, I think yours yours are, yours are really good, though. I follow all of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so... We brought some food in. Can we break it down one by one? I think this is the venison chili. Yes, that is the venison chili. And what all goes in this? Venison is... What, well, we use the backstrap. Venison? venison is deer. Okay, a deer. And we use the backstrap, which is the best quality of the deer. Yes. The, the highest priced, the tastiest, and nothing is too good for you guys. You know, thank you. You know, it's, <laughs> it's deer season right now, right? It is. It is. Um, Chef Q actually bought that, and the price was a little out, outlandish. Because I had teased them because I said I've never I've never bought venison. Right. I've always had friends that had given it to me. Because so, it's hunting season right yes, now. It and is they hunting be. season. So anybody that has venison, you can you're welcome to call me up and give me venison. Yeah. Hey, here's a question from Michelle. She said, Oh, is that the kids cooking club in Texas City at St. George's? That is. Okay. Is that Michelle Alvarado? It's uh, Lacombe, Michelle oh, Lacombe. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for watching. Hey, good morning, Chris. Everybody that's tuning in, we're giving away some passes to the Texas Renaissance Festival. All you have to do to be eligible to win these is like, share, comment on this video. Maybe even comment if you've been before what your favorite part of the Renaissance Festival was. Mine is going to have to be the food. Yes. It always comes back to the turkey leg. The turkey legs are phenomenal out there. You know, we have Chef Jimmy here in studio. Chef, it is Thanksgiving time. It's your time to shine. It's my time to shine. I'm about to eat everything on, on the table <laughs> whenever it's Thanksgiving. Speaking of turkey legs, right? what are you cooking traditionally on Thanksgiving? Well, this, this year it's just going to be my wife and I at home, so we're only making a turkey and a ham. Okay. She told me we're doing a traditional full-blown-out dinner for the two of us. We always have friends that stop over. But we're doing a turkey ham. We're doing the, the green bean casserole, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, all that good stuff. Yeah, Green uh, green bean casserole, that's probably one of my favorites. That is my favorite. What all goes in yours? Um, mine is the, the mushroom soup, of course. Ethan, write this down. We're going to steal this <laughs> recipe. Okay. Mushroom um, soup. I add a little extra garlic. We use the, the French-style green beans, mm -hmm. a whole ton of the turkey onions, and a bunch of cheese. <laughs> it's real think, simple but good. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had it with, with cheese on it. No? No. Well, my, gr to... my grandma makes it, and it's delicious, right. but- 
I'm I'm down to try new yeah, things. Yeah, I top it with the cheese just because cheese makes everything better. Amen. <laughs> I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. Cheese does make everything better. Okay, so green bean casserole, uh, that's gonna be on on your table. Yes. With, you know, with your catering service, do do people reach out to you and say, hey? Maybe I'm busy or I'm a bad cook or I just need some extra sides or I, I like to do the sides. I need a turkey or a ham. Did they I don't reach think out to you? anybody's ever said they were a bad cook, but you can kind of tell sometimes <laughs> by what they order. But we do offer a full me- menu with Tastefully Yours. We're doing sides. We're doing turkeys. We're doing hams. We're doing pies. for. I mean, you, you buy one item or a whole dinner through us. Okay. All right. When did you know that you were going to be a cook? Were you always cooking as a kid? Did you like to eat as a kid? Were you picky and so I need to cook it myself? (laughs) I grew up in a single family household. My mother worked all the time. And I have a sister named Joanne who I love dearly. Mm -hmm. And she was just, she's older than me. She's going to love that. But (laughs) I had to learn to cook on my own. Mm -hmm. It's just something we learned to do. And when I was 14, I was a dishwasher at a place in Alvin, Texas called Two Flags Cafe. And the chef didn't show up for three days, and they threw me on the line and made me, made me cook. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I found out I was good at it. The fourth day when he showed back up, he fired me and put me back at the dishes. Oh, man. <laughs> but you found a pa- at that point, yes. you realized, hey, I'm good at this. I've been doing it, and maybe I'll stick with this. Yeah, at 14, I, I, I just I fell in love with the business. It's one of the hardest businesses in the world. You know, running a restaurant, trying to work in a restaurant, it's a lot of long hours. But it's just, it's, you've got to have passion for it. Yeah, you're going to be working, you know, every holiday. Yes. Even more. Weekends. You know, and you're, you're pre- here's the hardest part, I think. You're prepping and cooking all this food, and you know it's delicious, and it's good, but it's not for you. No, I, I, I rarely eat everything I cook. You know, I love what I cook. I know what it should taste like, but <laughs> I'd rather go out to eat. <laughs> yeah, let somebody else uh, cook and clean. Yes, yes. Cook and clean, all right. So- you know, you mentioned cooking whenever your mom's at work. You have your right. older sister as well. Was she cooking for you or kind of teaching you, or, you, or was she more we, like We would watch her, but we would kind of just had to figure it out. Yeah. What was your dish as a child? Is there something you was your, your it, it go-to? Was, I, we did chicken tacos a lot. I'm feeling that. Not. You know, it's just that was something my mom would make. It was re- very inexpensive to make. You know, would boil off the chicken, shred it, saute it, and get it ready. I mean, it was just, it was... It was in bread to me. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, of my own experiences, whenever I didn't start trying to cook until I graduated high school. Okay. My mom, like dinner every day, well, she packed my lunch for school and then right, dinner right. every day was cooking something. And I just ate till I couldn't eat anymore. I was pretty That's a good thing. pretty spoiled. You know, like a child just like right, eating, right, eating. Right. And then I started to uh to cook eggs and that's where it started for me. And then I moved out and I was Eating a lot of eggs, but I feel like it couldn't mess it up. And I'd just like throw right, random right. stuff in there. I felt like Emerald, you know, bam, I'm throwing like a piece of bacon in the eggs. I'm like, salt. oh yeah, <laughs> salt bay. That was me as as a child. And um, I, I did not have, I wish I would have started sooner. Well, my, my nine-year-old stepdaughter, she's decided she wants to be a chef. And I bring her in the kitchen as often as I can. Yeah. You know, there's pictures on my Facebook of her trimming pork tenderloins making her own fruit and meat trays. She's a little beast. All right. You know, we've got a, I've got a shout out to my nephew, Juan. Um, my, my daughter picks on him because she's quicker in the kitchen than he is. and He's 19. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. It's, it's a big competition that he bowed out of with her on cooking dinner for me. And it was a $20, like, grand prize. Mm-hmm. And Juan bowed down to the nine-year-old. Do you ever watch any of the cooking shows, like on the Food Network or the competition style I, stuff? I do, I do. I, I enjoy them a lot. Is there one that you like more? I like Cutthroat Kitchen. Cutthroat Kitchen. Yeah. What's the um, the the idea of that the, one? The idea behind that is you just try to cut the other chef's throat by <laughs> by buying their ingredients or taking their ingredients away from them. Okay, okay. I've always wanted to do something with the food bank. Yes. Where we do a Cutthroat Kitchen, but instead of cutting throats. You know, you have, like, uh, donors buy the chef something. Okay. You know, do a competition that way. That's pretty cool. And now you are are doing a class, and I I believe Michelle mentioned that. Can you share? What is that about? Well, the the Kids Cooking Club is, we started it about seven years ago, and we've seen thousands of children and parents that have come through. It's a free cooking class on the second Saturday of the month. Excuse me. And it's, it's from noon to two. 
And we've done things from pizzas to meatballs to baked fried chicken. And it's just something to encourage parents and families to get together and, you know, just enjoy the enjoy cooking. Yeah. In my life, every party I've ever been to has always been around focused food. around the kitchen. Yeah. You and know? before I go anywhere, I look at the menu. Before I go anywhere, <laughs> I ask well, two things. Who's going to be there? What kind of food is going to be right. there? Those are the most important things to Yes, me. it is. I mean, yeah. you know, like I said, I mean, I, I, I've just fond memories around the kitchen table, and that's what I wanted to instill with these kids now with the cooking class. Cool. All right. And did, was that your idea, or did someone approach you? And why is it? Why do you think it's important to teach, you know, children? Well, um, when I started doing it, I had just, just given my life to Christ, and I was praying on something that I wanted to do as a ministry. And, you know, basically through prayer, this was brought to me through, you know, through God. And it was funny because I didn't have a place to do it. I wasn't cooking professionally at the time. And, you know, he revealed to me through prayer. I was at a, a business meeting and I got to meet Pastor Robin from St. George's. And, you know, it was just, it was really funny the way it worked because I didn't know who she was. But I could hear the voice saying, that's who you're bringing the cooking class to. So it just works out. Yeah, it just worked out perfect. Um, when I went in the first time to do the class, she had warned me about the men from the church. They were kind of standoffish with new people in their kitchen. And God just opened up the doors, and, you know, it's seven, eight years later, and it's just incredible. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So you mentioned at 14, you know, working in Alvin as a dishwasher. Right. Are you originally from this area? No, I'm not originally. I moved down here um, from California. To move in with my dad. Okay, so how old were you at that point? I was 13 and a half when I came down. Okay, um, so back in California, did you have a chance to, like, eat the Mexican food? Or, like, there's oh, a lot of difference. Time. Yeah. Yes, there's a big difference. Um, we used to go to Tijuana all the time, and the tacos there are just incredible. You know, you have the little street cart vendors on every corner, and it's just amazing. I mean, 30 years ago, it was three tacos for a dollar. Yeah. So you can imagine what you could do with a couple bucks down there. Man, here's what we do. <laughs> time travel. Hear me out. We go back in time, 30 years. We're going to Tijuana, getting those those dollar, three, three tacos three for, for a dollar, dollar, and we're feeling good. Right now it's 10, 12 a.m. This is K-H-E-A Radio.com 99.5. We're giving away some passes to the Texas Renaissance Festival through Facebook. So if you're listening on 99.5 FM or, or if you're watching on Channel 46, go ahead and head over to KHEA Radio's Facebook page. Give us the thumbs up. Give us the follow, and you'll have a chance to win. We're, we have six passes, and we're going to be giving them away uh, to you. All you have to do is like, share, comment on this Facebook uh, stream, this this page, this video, and you'll have an opportunity to win. Good morning. All, um, let me know where you're watching from, and then also let me know if you've been to the Renaissance Festival before. We're talking to Chef Jimmy Graves. He brought a bunch of food in here, and I'm very excited to tear into <laughs> all of it, but I'm going to have to share because it's a lot. I'm going to pull something out the bag, okay. and then we can break it down That's fine. and see what it is. It's a big bag of mystery. Oh, what, is, what is this? That's a, a, a two-sausage chicken jambalaya. It smells great. It's not too spicy. That's why I brought the hot sauce because I wasn't sure if you guys want it hot or not. I get down. I get down with the spice <laughs> and the hotness. So this is uh, this is jambalaya. Yes, jambalaya. Yes. Jambalaya is traditionally like Cajun Louisiana it's food. It's Cajun Louisiana food. Um, this this particular one we bake similar to like a paella. We make it like a paella in the pan, you know, and just simmer it real slow. And it has tomatoes, onions, celery, green pepper in it. Chicken, Ooh. we have andouille and smoked sausage in there. Okay, whenever you were talking about simmering in the bottom of the pan and you said, what did you call it? Um, kind of like paella. What is paella? Paella is a um, South American dish. Okay. And it's made with rice. And it, it's done in a, it's like a two-inch pan that it's done in. And it's slow cooked, real slow, but it has lobster, shrimp, clams, fish, chicken, all kinds of good stuff in it. Man, do you have a favorite kind of food that you enjoy eating and that you enjoy cooking and are they the same one of my favorite foods that i enjoy cooking and eating is uh, i do a jerk chicken it's got 18 different spices in the sauce itself we make it our own, on our own and then it's just i put it on the chicken you know the skewers yeah because anything on a stick is fun is jerk chicken is that cajun as well that's caribbean caribbean i do all kinds of cooking all kind yeah. yeah i do i do tacos i do an asian fusion taco what goes on that? Well, I use a little oyster sauce. Um, I can either use chicken or pork with it. And then we do a, a shredded coleslaw 
with jalapenos on the top of it. Mm-hmm. All um, right. Tomorrow we have a special coming out. We're doing a sweet, a sweet Thai chicken leg with fried rice for tomorrow. And where can I get that at? You can get that at Tastefully Yours Catering. So what's the location? How do I get there? Well, the location is 701 Volney Road. And like I said, it's five minutes down from here. And we're going to start doing prep meals. And right now we're just kind of rolling out gumbos. And we're doing the jambalayas. We're doing a special a day right now. We have a couple of salads you can pick up. Yeah. So whenever it comes to the prep meals, I'm always on the journey to, to like, lose weight, stay in shape. Right. Like, I'll eat really bad for a portion of, like, like couple, a month and a half. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> I put on some weight, and then I try and trim it back. So are you prepping meals for people that are looking to, you know, stay healthy, get healthy, or they just want to eat and they well, want right to delicious? Well, right now it's just going to be, a, like, prep meal. But um, we're, we're looking into the fit meals more, but, it's you know, we just want to do a little more research on that. Yeah. You know, because I don't want to fib to anybody, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's important. Tell them this is low fat. Go ahead and eat two of them. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. We're talking to Chef Jimmy, and we're learning about everything that he has going on, which is a lot. You know, whenever you run 20 Facebook pages, you're going to be busy, and your phone's probably going off all yes, the time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I get about four hours sleep a night. Mm-hmm. And the rest, you just, just run just and work. gun it. Okay. I work. Yeah. Whenever it comes to... Uh, social media and Facebook, when did you find that that's something that you also enjoyed helping other people and running your own pages? Well, just I kind of fell into it. I was working at the Post newspaper and I just started picking up some of the nonprofits pages. Yeah. What, what, were, you doing at the, what were you doing at the Post? Um, I was a sales account executive. Cool. Account executive. And that's right I, on 6th. That is on 6th Street. And it's, 6th Street is near and dear to my heart. I love it. Mm hmm. So you're working at the Post, uh, you know, working with different accounts, yes. and then you saw there was nonprofits in our area. A lot of nonprofits in our area, they just, you know, a lot of them work with volunteers, and I just started volunteering to run their pages. So, you know, it's fun. I do I do St. George's page. I do uh, Susan's Markets page. You know, I do a few different ones, and, you know, it's, it's one of the ways I can give back to the community. Yeah, that's that, that's very important. So you started doing that. And then there's one that I follow. It's called Bay Area Entertainer. Yes. When did that start? What was the idea for it? Well, that started about four years ago. It was, it was a paper originally that came out once a month. <clears throat> and it was Tech City Lamarck Entertainer. And I started watching that the prints, the print papers just weren't being picked up. So we, imp, you know, implemented a, a, a website with it. We're doing about 1,200 hits a day right now on the, on the website. And I'm able to update it daily, which is fun. You know, so we just took it out of print. We named, renamed it Bay Area Entertainer because we're encompassing the whole county now. Yeah. You know, it seems like it'd be a lot of work to start a publication. How often were those uh, Bay Area Entertainers coming out originally? We were doing them once a month. Once a month. And it, and it is a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot more work than I thought it was. Yeah. And, like, what does it take to, to do that? Like, I guess, like, even money-wise, like, how much money was going into <laughs> printing one publication a month? Um, just, I mean, the cost on print alone was about $2,500. And then, of course, we had production. We had ad space designing and all that good stuff. So, I mean, it, it, was, it was a little pricey. And, you know, and now I'm able, I'm able to offer a lot more affordable advertising, you know, for consumers. It's, being, it's reaching out to more people. And it's, you know, saving a lot of people money. Yeah. So how can I find that? Is it BayAreaEntertainer.com? It's BayAreaEntertainer.com, correct. And then the Facebook page as well. It's Bay Area Entertainer. Cool. You know, I'm sure if on KEHA Radio you can find it there because I know yes. you've liked it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, make sure that you check out Bay Area Entertainer. Give them a like. They are, you know, touching and spreading positive news in our area, which I feel like there's a lot, but any opportunity that there is like another megaphone spreading right. that, you know, why not? Why not look into it? Why not help produce content that goes there? So, you know, when whenever you were working at the Post, um, what is it that drew you to, I guess, like the news? What drew you to spreading information? You know, it's it was funny. I just I kept looking at stuff, and there was nothing I wanted to see. So I, I figured if I created something that I wanted to see, yeah, other people had to want it as well. Right. You know, I mean, because I, I was tired of the police chases, all the bad news. You know, so I wanted to share, you know, things for nonprofits, good news about things that are coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love our, our the whole county that we live in is great. Yeah, I, I was uh, I've had some meetings and some conversations with the people like the city of Texas City and right. the United Way and the police department and, and a bunch of different people. And whenever it comes to 
you know, events and food trucks, <laughs> they always say, well, call Chef Jimmy. <laughs> call Chef Jimmy. Email I, Chef Jimmy. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So you have a reputation in the area as the person to contact if you need something. I feel so blessed that way because, I mean, it's just taken a lot of years of working hard and just doing what I say, mm-hmm. you know, which is, you know, sometimes hard. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I know 6th Street has a lot of really cool events going on. Right. But they're also, uh, you know, implementing like more food and more food yes, trucks. Yes, they are. They are. What can you tell us about that? Well, um, the food trucks right now they have down there, they have, you know, Bronco burritos. But uh, the 6th Street Ice House just reopened. Um, David and Teresa have, have put a lot of money into it. They've really cleaned it up. You know, and then you've got the 6th Street Bar and uh, Garage Bar, which is uh, part of part of that is my menu still. Mm-hmm. I, I helped open the original concept with them. And you've got downtown is reconcepting as well right now. We've got the Palette Bar that will be opening soon. And then uh, Rice Barbecue. And All there's right. a lot of new places. Oh, and there's OJ's Soul Food and Seafood. There's a bakery that's about to open next to the ice cream shop, Yeah, that's too. with uh, Hey Mikey. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly too much details on that, but anything Mikey does is awesome. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, coming, like, really, really yeah, soon. Yeah, he's, I would say, about 90% done with it. Okay. So that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I last went out to 6th Street for Touch Truck. Right. Which is a couple weekends ago. My you, wife actually set up all the food trucks and vendors. Yeah. You were out there, right? Yeah. With Q's Catering? You were with Q's Catering right next to 6th Street Ice House. And we talked about that because I was trying to find you. You had messaged like, hey, if you come out. Right. And I was like, I'm coming out. <laughs> but there were so many. So the, the way your wife, I guess, set it up, I was trying to find you. I was like, where well, where's I, going on? I, there was I a chose lot of my spot. Okay. And it was a bad spot. It was my fault. <laughs> 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 but we still had fun. We got to see a lot of kids. And God, the horns were unbelievable. There are some loud <laughs> horns out there. You know what's funny? There were, there, you know, horns everywhere. And so, yes. like, I have my kids, my daughter's two, my son's seven. <laughs> so we're going out. We're having a blast. Of course, I'm, like, looking for the food. So I'm like, where's Chef Jimmy? Because we kept walking through the trucks. And I was like, right. I don't see the Q's catering truck. I don't see it. I don't see it. Right. So I went all the way down. And my wife's like, we got to get food. Because she was hungry. Because I was like, well, we'll keep going. We'll see what we can <laughs> find. Um, so on the way back. My kids were finally able to, like, look in some trucks. So right. the first one, my son went to go honk the horn. The a bus. guy went into the – no, it wasn't. Okay. A guy went into the window and was, like, telling him to stop honking the horn. I was, like, really? Like, everywhere else, horns are blaring. Right, right. And I was, like, with your kid. Yeah, Mike, I was, I was, like, really? <laughs> you don't hear, like, the the giant trucks over there? It was, like, blaring the horn. It was funny. Well, the, the, the most climbed upon truck there is the school bus. It's Why like the, is that? I, I have no idea. I think it's because they're not allowed to do anything wrong oh, on the school bus. Oh, yeah. So now they're able to do whatever they want. It's that just makes sense. human nature. Yes, <laughs> that makes sense. I was wondering that because I saw a big old line oh, get on yeah. the school bus. Like These kids probably ride on a school bus, uh, you know, if field trips. Right, right. Wherever. For, and some of them five days a week, but there's always the biggest line at the school bus <laughs> because we want what we can't have. <laughs> yeah. So now there's no rules on the school bus. Yes. During tr- touch truck. And mo- that Monday, it's probably really, really hard for the bus drivers. Yeah, <laughs> to wrangle them back in. Right now, it's 1023 a.m. This is KHEA Radio.com, 99.5 FM. We're giving away some passes to the Texas Renaissance Festival. It's taking place right now. So if you want to win some of these tickets that we are giving away, compliments of Tastefully Yours Catering, all you have to do is like this video, comment on this video, share it out. Uh, to your Facebook feed, and then in the comments, let me know, have you been before? What are you looking forward to checking out while you're there? Have you been to the Renaissance Festival? I I went a couple years ago. How was it for you? It was amazing. It was fun. It's not really my my thing. Yeah. Because you got to dress up to really, I mean, you don't have to, but the people I went with all dressed up. Did you? No. Not, so I was like the sore thumb. <laughs> you know, or the you know the big thumbs sticking out, mm-hmm. but I mean it, it is really neat. It, it's really cool to watch the jousting. Yeah, you know, I went to a place in Dallas, and it's called Medieval Times. Okay, so I've been to like one in that. Chicago. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The jousting and the knights, and you're you in gotta, sections. You got to ask the king if you can go to the restroom. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a great time. I enjoy stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of dressing up at all. Right. For, for events, but sometimes it is more fun if you just, like, let go of your cares and just embrace everything. Yes, yes. I mean, last year for Dickens on the Strand, I dressed as a pirate. 
And other than it being a pink shirt, I was okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> Why a pirate? Just because I was more comfortable with that. Everybody else was just w- out there. Yeah. <laughs> I had to wear less of, like, dress-up stuff to be a pirate. Yes. Okay, I got you. So it made me a little more comfortable. You felt pirate-esque yes. already. I didn't wear the patch. I should have wore the patch, though. It's necessary. I think next time. Are you going to do it uh, next year? Yeah, we're going to Dickens on the Strand. I'll, I'll be getting tickets to give away as well for that. Cool. Dickens on the Strand. That's in Galveston, Galveston on the right. Strand, and right. they've been doing that for years. I think this is the 50th anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not surprised. I remember being a kid and, and hearing about Dickens on the Strand. I didn't know what it was, but I would just see pictures like in the newspaper. For years, I didn't know what it was. I yeah. mean, it, you know, when I first moved here, I'd hear about it. I'm like, what? what is it? Yeah. But it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay, cool. So uh, Chef Jimmy Graves, he's here in studio, again, giving away some passes to the Texas Renaissance Festival. If you're interested in those, let me know. Um, so Thanksgiving, it's next week, right? Yeah. It's November 18th today, and I think <laughs> Thanksgiving is next Thursday. That's the it 28th. Is. So it we're is. about uh, seven, eight, nine, like 10 days away, right? <laughs> Wh- Scary, but we are. When's the last day somebody can place an order with you and get items for Thanksgiving? Uh, we're trying to do pickups all the day before. You know, because the day of, my wife's not going to have me stay home for sure. And she has the menu already picked oh, yeah. out. Oh, yeah. Did she marry you for your chef skills in part? In part, yes. I mainly mean, love or mainly chef skills? I think a little of both. I think a little of both. She probably loves you. And then, and, and now with, that now that she's got me, skills. she found out I'm a little annoying. <laughs> so it's, just, it's got to be love now. <laughs> <laughs> like it's too late. You signed here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Till, till death do us part. All right. Um, and again, can we walk through some of those traditional uh, items that you and everybody else eats for Thanksgiving? Can you give me some secrets for cooking a turkey? Because I've cooked one turkey in my life, and I think I remember it turned out okay. Did it turn out okay? It turned out I, okay. I always do the breast side down because I want all the juices to, to, to go to the breast. Um, I'm not a big baster. I, I, I when you cover baste it, with it butter. that means you like inject it? No, the basting is where you take the juice and kind of pour it on top. Oh, yeah. That's like my mom used to do that. Okay. And I remember my mom would do it every 12 and a half minutes. Oh, well, as like, it's cooking? For like 19 hours. This seems like it would take longer. Oh, yeah. My, when my mom cooked Thanksgiving, it was like a day and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the very first time I cooked dinner, Thanksgiving dinner after I became a chef and moved back home for a little bit, it, you know, my mom woke up and I was sitting on the couch doing nothing. And she was yeah. freaking out. I'm like, what? And I said, the ham's across the hall, because we lived in an apartment complex. Yeah. I had a ham in the neighbor's house. I had a turkey yeah. in our house. We had pork tenderloin somewhere else. I had all the sides done. And she was just kind of upset, because I made it so easy. And like I said, it took her a day and a half to cook mm. Thanksgiving dinner. 19 hours to <laughs> yeah. cook the turkey. You know, it was like a week to defrost it. And I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just like parents when they said they w- walked to school. Both ways uphill. Exactly. You know, that's how my mom cooked turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Made it seem like it was really hard. And, you know, it is a lot of work if you don't know what you're doing. It, it, like it me. is. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, like I said, I've been blessed and I'm so used to cooking that it's, it's just second nature for me. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times I don't even, it's like I already know what has to be in it. And I can tell by the smell how it's going to taste. Yeah. You know, because people laugh. They're like, you don't taste your food? I said, no, it's good. Try it. You know? You're right. Yeah, and, and it's just I'm, I've done it so many times that it's repetition now for me. Yeah. So so one thing that I've noticed is people enjoy the same foods cooked many different ways. Oh yeah. So oh, you yeah. got you know fried turkey, you got smoked <laughs> turkey. I don't do the fried turkeys because turkey. they're dangerous. Why? Oh, because the fryer. It's just what? Well, just I've seen too many videos and I'd get in a hurry trying to do them. So I like doing smoked turkeys. I like doing baked turkeys like doing things low and slow, kind of like barbecuing. Right. But it just, you know, just easier. If you know, I want a fried turkey, I'll order one. That makes sense. <laughs> I've I've had fried turkey. My dad's made it, and I've had some that is that have been ordered, and it's so good. Oh, it really is. It is good. But the only thing I wish is that it was breaded, kind of like straight up Popeye's <laughs> chicken, like if that, they breaded that's it. That's a good idea. And fry it, and then it just comes out like that. I think it did almost have to par cook it first. Because it takes a little longer to cook, and then pull it out and bread it. And then bread it. Is like, that possible? I, I don't know. we got to try that. That might be fun to try. Is that how it is when, as a chef? You know, like experimenting to find new things. Like, is that possible? Maybe. It's, Let's try yeah, it. Oh, I, I do things all the time that, you know, that I guess normal chefs or traditional chefs would be like, you're not supposed to do that. 
Yeah. I'm like, why? <laughs> so do you consider <laughs> why am I not? You consider yourself like an untraditional chef? I'm an untraditional chef. I, I I've never been to formal training. I've been in the business for a little over 30 years. I've ran several restaurants, um, catering. I've owned several different catering companies. I've written hundreds of menus. Um, I got a new concept coming up next year. I'm not going to say too much about it. Now I want to know. But in January, <laughs> I'll tell you off the air. Okay, okay. But in January, we're going to be hitting some uh, some big things. It's going to be fun. Can you can you hint like a style, <laughs> or did you already hint with the hitting some big things? Oh, it's it's going to be. It's just you know. I have a friend in St. Louis that started doing it, and it's going to be fun. I, okay, I just want to leave everybody hanging until January, but January 1, I'm going to roll it out, and everybody's going to know what's going on. All right, January 1, it's going to be coming to you, Q's Catering. And this was a question that we had from Jazz. She said, do you have a restaurant? You have a catering company, but you can come pick it up and order it. Um, where where are you located, and how can somebody we're, find your menu and order? We're at 701 Volney Road. i got to always look at the... The website is tastefullyyoursevents.com, and the phone number is 409-916-2970. Okay. And you, that, that'll actually reach me directly. But, yes, you can order online. Um, you can check out our menu online. You can call me up. If you follow our Tastefully Yours Events catering Facebook, I'll, I'll be doing daily posts about what we're selling that day. And we're doing pickups now until about 12. Okay. And it changes it's almost gonna daily? It's going to change daily. We're going to have some of the staples for the winter time. We're going to have jambalaya, red beans and brisket, um, chili, gumbo, and stuff like that. But every day we're going to do something a little different. Yeah. Those are all very, you know, the weather's getting a little bit warm. Right. I mean, cooler. <laughs> you know, people always talk about, this is chilly weather. Right, right. It's a real thing. When in Texas, if it's 70 degrees, chilly it's weather. chilly weather. Okay. Chili is kind of my thing. Like, that's one of my weaknesses and maybe that's where i get all my strength i don't know okay. but i love chili not even it doesn't it can be any kind of chili like right, ch right. chili from a can chili you know that somebody you, you made. don't care i'm down i love chili chili and cheese and you just pour it on top of anything like a burrito yeah you know fritos fritos are always good in it a chili dog chili chili burger chili burger i We're like it all sound like forrest gump chili shrimp chili chili shrimp Hormel chili, <laughs> Wolf Brand chili, Chef Jimmy's chi chili, everybody's chili. I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I don't know, but they they have that white chili. I'm not a big fan of it yet. What kind of chili is that? It's like a white sauce that they're using. Okay. They're using the navy beans, like the white navy beans, and I still haven't caught onto that yet. I'd eat it. <laughs> I don't even care. I didn't say I don't eat it. I just haven't <laughs> caught onto it yet. I got gotcha. you. Hey, I got to say good morning to to Brendan Keys. Good morning, sir. And that is your friend. You <laughs> that's know my buddy. That's how I hail, met Brendan hail, Keys. Hail, hail, hail. <laughs> What's up, Brendan? How are you, my friend? How did you meet Brendan Keys? Oh man, I met him at the Post newspaper like seven years ago. He had come in to do an interview, and we had contact about doing advertising and all that good stuff. And I've just watched him rise and you know raise his team up and do well. Celtic FC America. Yes. That is, uh, you know, a, a soccer club, a football club here locally. They play their home games in League City, and they just won the Texas Cup. Yeah, that's, that's a big a deal. Huge thing. I got the pictures in studio. I got a medal last week. I know I didn't get the medal. I thought he was my good friend. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so my son, who is seven, uh, I, I showed him. I was like, "Look at this medal! Look at this medal I got!" And he got kind of salty and a little. He was like, "You're just showing off." And I was like, I'm not showing up. I just thought it was cool. He was like, give me that medal. And I was like, okay, you can see it. You can see it. But uh, So who has you. the medal now, you or him? It's in my car. I can't keep oh, it in okay. the house because then he'll just steal he'll it from just me. Take it from so me. I keep it in my car. It's literally in my passenger seat, and I just take it. And I didn't want to hang it from the, the rear view because what if somebody smashes my window well, and steals get your it? Or you might just look like you're boasting as you're driving. Exactly. Like my son thought. He was like, you're just showing off. You got a medal. Tell him it's a safe driver medal. Yeah. <laughs> Show it to my insurance. Make it go down. It's 1034. This is KHEA Radio.com, 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. I'm Gardy. We're talking to Chef Jimmy about everything that he has going on. He actually brought some hot sauce in as well. Q's Catering. Red Habanero hot sauce. And we got Cajun Cayenne hot sauce. Um, whenever it comes to making and experimenting with new things like this, right, you have to taste test it a lot. Oh, we taste test a lot. Do you get a lot of people pulled in? Like, what does the process look like for <laughs> creating a new product and a new hot sauce? Um, 
couple years ago, I had to learn how to bake. Like, I know how to bake, but somebody wanted a, an Italian cream cake. And I did not know how to make it. They told me to learn how to make it. They were buying it and picking it up Friday, and they hung up the phone. They were very, very they trusting. Said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I went to Google like everybody does. I pulled some some things from different recipes. And the first cake I made, I put on Facebook, hey, come on out, get a piece of free cake. Let's go. People were pulling up to my house, getting cake and driving off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and at the time, I lived in a not-so-good part of town. And I told people, I said, it's going to be funny if you get stopped. You're going to show them what you're buying here or getting. Yeah, why are all these but cars we, we, just coming up and pulling right? away? And th- that's literally, it, you know, they would pull up, I would walk out, give them cake. They would leave. <laughs> I can see the cops like going into the cake, like opening it up. Like, what's in here? I mean, here? I'm just glad I know the police. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I think I had a couple officers come up and get some cake as well. But it's it just anything I try, we, we, we test that out on people we know. Okay. They're my lab rats. For sure. But it's a good it's a good project. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you probably have a lot of volunteers. We do. We do. So this hot sauce, would this go on like chips, tacos? It goes on tacos? anything but cold cereal. <laughs> He's laughing over there. Okay, good to I've know. I've tried it. Good to know. It's not good on cold cereal. Yeah. One of my favorite things about hot sauce, like- He's still going. I love it. <laughs> I've mentioned like trying to trying to eat healthy at times. Like if you're eating something and it's just like, man, but you kick it up, you just put some hot oh, yeah. sauce on it oh, and yeah. it just takes it immediately to the next, to the next level. level. Yeah, for to sure. The next level. And that, uh, that's what hot sauce does for me. It, and it has like zero calories. Exactly. It's, it's fat free. so much flavor. It's fat free. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull in the bag and and pull something else out and see what we have. We're talking to Chef Jimmy, Tastefully Yours Catering, Q's Catering, Bay Area Entertainer, the man that has kids cooking very busy. So we have, I believe this is gumbo, right? That's gumbo, yes. All right. Um, What is going on with your gumbo? Oh, you're going to love it. You should should actually try some. I do want to try some gumbo. Ethan. On air. Ethan, do you want to go grab us? I got spoons. We have some spoons. We just go grab us a bowl. Like, uh, there's some over there, <laughs> you know where, where they are, where the microwave He's is. He's like, I'll find them. Yeah, just go grab some real dishes, grab a couple <laughs> bowls so you can have have some too. That's very nice of you. Oh yeah, no, I <laughs> I can't eat, I can't eat all this food. No, there's a lot. I brought a lot in. There's a ton of food in here, which I am excited about. Um, and and gumbo. So whenever it comes to gumbo, what's the most important part to you? The roux. It is the roux, and it's just cooking it slow and slow. Yeah. You know, with a lot of bacon grease. Mm-hmm. Whenever it goes to the process, like how long does it take to create the the roux? It's, it's about an hour. It's about an hour long roux. Mm-hmm. And yours, like I've seen some that are like thicker and some that are right. thinner. What, Mine's what is a little yours? thinner, but I, I call it it has that dirty flavor. Yeah. And you, you'll see what I mean. It's not like dirty, like it's just that it's that like Louisiana flavor. Okay. You know, and I get a lot of people from Louisiana that'll say, "Oh, I'm from Louisiana. Let me try it." Yeah. And so far, none of them have spit it out. They all loved it. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm good with that. So yours is like the Louisiana Cajun I, as, style gumbo? As far as I know. Yeah. I mean, they're not complaining about it. They're eating it. Yeah. And and, it, and I learned how to make it originally in Chicago. Okay. When so, did you go to Chicago? I lived there for about 20 years. For tw- Okay. Yeah. So you were in? In Chicago 20 years where I did a lot of my restaurant stuff. Okay. So at I, what point did you move? So 14 years, 13 I and a half, 14. I was 18 when I moved to Chicago. So 14 to 18, you lived here in the area. Yeah. You mentioned working in Alvin. Yes. Then you moved to Chicago. What took you there? Um, I just wanted to, my, my father had moved there. And, I, you know, I was old enough where I, I moved, but I moved away from him. Yes. And he lived in one of the suburbs i lived in the city and it's an amazing place but it's way too busy is there a lot of good food oh the neighborhood i lived in you could walk out of my my apartment and within a minute you would have a cab within two minutes you could be at five different restaurants wow you know it was amazing i mean i I ran an italian restaurant on one corner across the street was a mexican restaurant then there was a starbucks and there was a like a bagel authority and then there was a sushi place okay Right, right in like a two-minute walk. Chicago, is it a good mix of people there? It's a very good mix of people. Um, it's just, it's not so safe anymore. Right. You know, I mean, you, everybody's seen the news. You see it on Chicago. the news all the time. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a crazy town. I don't know what, what's going on with them. Yeah. But the food's incredible. Well, the thing that, that I'm wondering, you know, a mix of people, because if you say we got Mexican food, right. we got sushi right, right across the oh, street yeah. from each other. Oh, yeah. I've, I've learned my lesson. I've, I've traveled a bit. You know, going to different places, and right. I've had Mexican food 
Yeah, all over the United States. I'll right. say that. And sometimes it's not the best. So Chicago, no, do they have Chicago good Mexican food? No, Chicago, it's okay. It's, it's nothing great. I love the fancy bowls you brought. Yeah, only the best for, <laughs> for tasteful ears, catering. Uh, those work. Ethan, could you pour? There's some rice in there as well. So Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to get Ethan to to pour some of this gumbo into these bowls, and we're going to try You definitely need a little bit of the rice, Ethan. Yeah. And the rice, the, this rice goes with it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Ethan, just put, I just want to taste like the roux with some, some rice on it, pretty much. So, like, <laughs> I'm talking like like maybe like two bites, like in mine, so that way I can keep talking. Because once I get eating, <laughs> I don't know you're, what you're will happen. I can't stop. Gone. So, you want the rice first? Yeah. And then the gumbo? Rice first, uh, a little bit, like maybe like two spoonfuls of, of gumbo, main, you know, roux. You want with some, some of stuff the roux. You want to try that dirtiness. That's what I need. <laughs> and, and maybe like one. Thing right. I'm talking like two, you know, a bite and a half or so. So, uh, Ethan in studio, making it happen. Intern Ethan, uh, controlling the stream, pretty much the master of puppets over there. He's doing a good job over there. He is. He's he's good, a uh, good guy. But we have Chef Jimmy here in in studio, and we're talking right now about whenever he was in Chicago. So you learned to make the gumbo whenever it, you were over there. Just, yeah, I, I was running restaurants, and it was just something that I could sell. So I learned to make it there. Yeah. How you know, many restaurants were you were you working with? When when I was out there, I over the years probably about twelve different restaurants. Yeah, but you were there for twenty years. Yeah, yeah. And then like one of the you know I worked for one company. We ran five restaurants for them. You know they're all different concepts. Okay. You know some were some were Spanish, some were uh, you know just deli kind of sandwiches, some were just bars and you know with tavern food. Yeah. But uh, the owner the owner had five different places I ran for them. You know. Chicago. The first thing that comes to mind is the their style of pizza. The deep dish pizza is incredible there. You know, one of the things I do miss also is almost any street corner in Chicago you can get a slice of pizza. Yeah. You know, you can't do that here. Kind of like New York. Right, right, right. I've never been to New York, but I've heard it's you know there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. But you, I mean, just a slice of pizza, walk it out your door and just walk down the street with it is great. Yeah, what other kind of food is Chicago known for? The hot dogs, of course. Okay, they have the Chicago style hot right, dogs. The Chicago style hot dogs. What goes on that? Because that's like onions. That's, that's uh, there's no no ketchup at all allowed. Mustard. Uh, mustard. Okay, mustard. Then they have a, a green relish, onion, pickle, cucumber, tomato, and sport peppers. But then what makes it really the, the flavor really good is a little bit of celery salt. Celery salt. Yeah. Okay. Like, I can't get all the good stuff that I need here to make a good hot dog, you know, without ordering it. And mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't need, a like, a box of 100 for myself. So I always use celery salt on any hot dog I eat now. Yeah. That's cool. So you got the Chicago-style hot dog, the Chicago-style pizza. Right. There's a place, I think it's called Dan's, and I've seen them on Bay Area Houston Food Lovers, that right. makes a, a Chicago-style deep dish. I have not been dish. there yet. It looks good in pictures. I it haven't been there good, either. Right. We should go one day. We need to go. Yeah, Ethan and check buy. it out. If Ethan's paying, I'm I'm there. So <laughs> he I'm, shook his head. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Ethan's a good guy. He's over here making uh, making some servings, and I'm I'm trying this right now. I had a little bit of the rice. I'm trying to make sure I get some roux and some sausage. But Chef Jimmy, you you made this. You kind of learned and picked up the I guess your recipe and crafted how you're going to make it in Chicago, right? And you brought and that it, back to here. And it always you know, I always add something new or learn something new. I mean. When anybody says they can't learn anything new, they're crazy. It's good. You know, thank you. It's very good. <laughs> I you love could, it. You could really tell by the face. Mm-hmm. You know, he wasn't going, oh, it's good. I want to try one of the hot sauces. <laughs> Which one would uh, go on this? Because we got the red habanero. I would do the habanero because I, I like a little more heat. Okay. You know, I like a little more heat. So a habanero, that's a kind of pepper. It's kind of pepper. Uh, they also call it scotch bonnet. Okay. It's those little orange kind of wrinkled ones you see at H-E-B a lot. All right, and we're we're trying some of this gumbo, tastefully yours catering gumbo. Yeah, you can just set it to the side. <laughs> Ethan's going ham sandwich. He's going in. I Ethan, know, Ethan's I like, need you to post a picture to social media at some he's point. He's smiling. Look at him. He's scooting up. He's like, yes. Okay, I'm putting a lot of hot sauce. I don't know if y'all are seeing what I'm doing, but I'm going for it. Ethan, do you <laughs> want to try Well, obviously, take a picture, then try yours first. See what kind of spice he's you have. He's like, let me eat. And then we're going to let this gentleman eat. But if, if you are hanging out, you just joined in, don't forget that you have an opportunity to win some passes to go to the Texas Renaissance Festival. It's taking place right now, and you can go. Compliments of Tastefully Yours Catering and Chef Jimmy making it happen. So uh, this this gumbo, 
I, w- I wish we had <laughs> Ethan's camera on so you could see. I may turn his mic on because we're going to need to see his reaction to everything as it goes. He's going to see if he can post this this picture. That It looks delicious. <laughs> so I'm going to try this with the hot sauce. I'm excited. Woo, that's good. <laughs> I put it's, a lot. It's not, a killer, it's not killer sauce. But it, I mean, it'll, it'll it'll light you up a little bit. Oh, that's that's good. That <laughs> and that, it's good in uh, you know I don't like I said I don't drink, but it's really good in Bloody Marys. Mm-hmm. I, I do like a Virgin Bloody Mary, and it's really good with you know which is just tomato juice, some right. seasonings, and then you throw the the <laughs> sauce the, in the there. hot sauce in it. Wow, that's great. Uh, so we have some comments coming in. This is from Gabby. She said, "I love Renfest. Renfest would love to go. Make sure you share it out. Thank you for for commenting and, and like this as well." Brendan Key said, Jimmy, a local legend in the Bay Area. <laughs> Great guy. Thank that's, you. That's facts. That's true. <laughs> and then Jazz, talking about the gumbo, said, you have to add rice to the gumbo. Yes. He wants to know if you if you make boudin as well. I do not make boudin. Um, my, my, my friend Big Phil does from Big Phil Smokehouse. And that, that's where I get my boudin from is from him. How important are those relationships? Oh, I love them. I mean, you know, just... For Lone Star Rally, I didn't want to do a, I didn't want to bring a trailer down. Yeah. For for a for a friend of mine, so I I called one of my buddies, Big Phil, and I said, Hey, you want the spot? He went down there for all three days, made some good money, had a heck of a time. I got to go eat for free. So that's, that's some of the, some of those relationships are really good. Yeah, I, I would say if there is somebody like if you need bread or like a bakery item, it's something that you are not set up to do or you're like, hey, they already do it perfect. It's local. I can support my friends. It just makes sense. Like it he does, has boudin. I need boudin right. for a recipe. I'm, I'm going to work with I need boudin for me. Yeah. Ethan, what do you think? Ethan's eating over there. Pull your, pull your mic. <laughs> he's he's pull shaking mic his over. head. That was a big, a big spoonful. Oh, I think he's in love. <laughs> he's in love with the gumbo. <laughs> That's a song. I'm in love with the gumbo. <laughs> About to be a rap song up in here. We have Ethan uh, trying it out over there. What's your thoughts? So I've only had gumbo maybe twice, including now. Have I ruined you for all of the gumbo? <laughs> I think you have. I am I am quite literally in love. <laughs> and my mouth is just a party right now. With flavors. That's That's a beautiful thing. That's what we try to achieve. Any chef, that's what we want to hear. Ethan, have you ever had habanero hot sauce before? Maybe put like a drop on I one. I want to say yes. Here, I'll, I'll get a spoonful. Yeah, I'll put a drop <laughs> a spoonful. On there. Yeah. yeah, get a spoonful and then put it. No, he's putting a drop on oh, okay. his on his spoonful, so that way it doesn't go in the whole bowl. Because then if he mixes it in, <laughs> right, right, and then he hates it. Yeah, I was like, it's too hot. Oh no, he loved it. Do you like spicy stuff, Ethan? Look, look Ethan at says he does. <laughs> so I'll have to bring another hot sauce because I think that one will be missing. No. <laughs> When can we uh when can we schedule you to come back? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. I love you guys. I mean, you guys are great. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. You know, you uh you know, it's always nice to hear that. And I like to bring gifts. I always like to bring gifts. Yeah, and and I love passing gifts along. So, you know, these Texas Renaissance Festival passes, we're going to get these out as soon as possible. We'll look at the at the show at the end of the day and and, and try and announce some winners tomorrow. And give you instructions on how you can come pick these up or we can get these to you because the Renaissance Festival is going on right now. And I actually looked it up a couple days ago. I was like, how long is it going on till? Because it goes through December, I, it's, I believe. Yeah, it's, uh, it should say it on the tickets, actually. Okay, cool. You know, speaking of, of really cool events, have you been, and they just opened this year, <coughs> the Magical Winter Lights at the Dog I Track? Have. I have. I've yeah. been every year since. Um, UC is a friend of mine. I, I met her, you know, just through advertising. And she's the one that that runs it. Yes. And they they do an amazing job out there. I um, mean, if you go out there, make sure you stay to see the acrobats. Oh yes. <clears throat> you know, it's not just about the lights. They bring in, I think it's about twenty different acrobat acrobats that do an act, and it's amazing. Yeah, and they they are not from here. Those acrobats. No, they're from China. Yeah, and they stay here, I yeah. guess, for months. For the the time they're here, and then they go back, and probably just rehearse because they're that incredible. Yeah. I wonder where they stay at. I need to have them in here. I don't know. That to bring them in be, studio and that, see how that goes. That would be neat. That'd be fun. I'm going to reach out. We're actually going to shoot a shine on Lamarck. I don't know if I'm if I'm allowed to reveal. Like, I've never asked. You right. know, like, you know, it's all scheduled out. <laughs> they might be hidden. <laughs> Do you, have you worked with Colleen Merritt before? I have. Colleen is a, I love Colleen. So she plans more than most people 
ever. Yes. And I don't know how well you, you know, you've, you've met me now and you, right. you know <laughs> how much I plan. No. So working with someone oh, like Colleen. Colleen has like 112 things today planned. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And she'll finish 113 of them. So at the beginning of the year, we actually met last December and she was like, here's all of the Shine on Lamarcks for the rest of the year that you're going to be doing. And I was like. All right, that's and this is the most planned out thing I've ever been involved yours, with. Colin, <laughs> on there as well. On there as well. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be awesome. <laughs> so yeah, we we have a uh, magical winter lights is uh, coming up, and we're going to be doing a shine on the mark f- for them. We have a shine on the mark that we're doing for Ebony and Ivory. That's right okay. over there. We have yeah, a yeah sh- in the mall, right there in the in the strip. And then we have um, I think there's four more for this year. Wow. That, that are left. And then we're going to be starting on the calendar for next year, which actually, I'm not even joking, the calendar's already, like, there. Things are flexible, right? but the calendar is is there. Like, it was there in January. She's like, oh, yeah, well, that'll be for next year. I was like, you're Colleen, like, you're, you're like, awesome. How are you figuring this out? She's yeah. got the year uh, 2025 planned. <laughs> okay. So uh, here's a reminder. If you're not watching on Channel 46, and you're not watching on Facebook, <laughs> and you're just listening on the radio, that we are eating some of this gumbo that Tastefully Years and Chef Jimmy prepared for us, um, and we put some of this habanero hot sauce in, and Jazz had a question. She said, how hot, on a scale from 1 to 10, how hot it is the hot it sauce? The it has little readings. Oh, the, me- the ratings. The meter. Okay, so this is the one we didn't try, the Cajun cayenne hot sauce. This is a 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10. And what does that one say? It's a 10? It's a 10. That one has a 10 out of 10. I, I, it might be a little fibbing on that. I think it's about an 8. I would say that's fair. I mean... I, an 8. Yeah, but I think they just, you know, the the marketers... Yes. They try to jack it up so, you, you're, you know, you're prepared. Well, depending on how much you put on it. Well, true. <laughs> yeah. I, I put quite a bit, and my mouth feels... If I was someone else, but I grew up eating right, spicy right, stuff as a kid. I'm the worst to take... If you ask, is that spicy? I say no, and most people are <laughs> not. <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah. oh, my God, what is this? I'm like, well, you asked the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my nine-year-old daughter used to eat, uh, she used to eat the jalapeno chips, and she'd have little tears coming out of her eyes. But she'd keep going? She'd keep going. She's a beast. She loves it. Power Brianna through. loves it. She loves hot. Yeah. I would say <laughs> that the hot sauce, that the habanero, straight up, probably a seven or an eight right. on my scale. Yeah. Like I said, I'd say it about an eight. Yeah. I've had the hottest stuff that I've ever had before is those little chiles, and I was talking to someone about this the other day, but my granddad. Oh, the little red ones? Yeah, they're red or sometimes those, green. Those are poisonous, I think. I, You know, I think that's what it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's not hot. It's an allergic reaction that yeah, your body is doing. I mean, I've, I've had them. They're piquinos or something. Yeah, piquinos. That's a weird, yeah. That's and and I've seen me. people that eat them like, like it's nothing. That's my granddad. And the ones that eat them usually are like these little skinny people. Yeah. That you couldn't think, wouldn't take anything. Yeah, well, that's my granddad. He's yeah. like me. Probably skinnier than I am, you know, just as tall right, as right. I am. You know, look, think of me like 50 years from now. You know, that's him. Right, and he just eats them like nothing. He takes them and puts them on his plate, cuts them up. You know, he has beans and rice probably every day. And, and he cuts them else. up so he even gets, like, he don't even get to swallow them. He's making sure. The juice, and he knows. Right, he's making it sure he's getting every bit of hot. <laughs> so that's the hottest thing I've had personally where it was just uncomfortable. I was like, yeah. why? It's You touch your finger and it just starts burning. You know what most, pe- most peppers do. Right, right. Well, it's like years ago I ran a, a Bayou City Wings in, in Baytown, and they had that the Insanity Wings. Mm. And as much fun as it was, because we had a waitress that was a little petite girl yeah, that could just handle all the heat. You know, we'd get the college guys in, and I'd have her eat one in front of them, and then would, like, egg them on. Yeah. And then, of course, they would, like, oh, we could do it. Yeah. They'd run to the bathroom. Oh, man. Spit it out, cry, you know. But it's wow. like it's not it's not flavor. No, it's <laughs> it's an allergic reaction. Right, that's, right. That's appropriate. <laughs> like my body is not re- I Like it just burns. Everything. Oh burns. yeah. I mean, you know, I like spicy. Not 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 like that though. Yeah. Um. Speaking of of those challenges, have you ever done one? Like, hey, this is how hot it is, or can you eat this much? I, I won't do them. I know better. You know, even when you see them with the jalapenos. Right. Like uh, Sixth Street, they do the chili cook-off. And Manny will do the, the jalapeno eating contest for the people. And he lets them eat the pickled jalapenos. Mm-hmm. You, you, your body's not designed to eat 20 of those in three minutes. Yeah. And then he says you got to eat one whole. Or, I, I think you start with a with a pepper, like a jalapeno first, then you can eat the pickled ones. Okay. But your body's not geared for that. It's not. 
You know, it's like eating 100 hot dogs. I'm not doing that. But sometimes you want to push your body to the limit. See what you're really <laughs> capable of sometimes. Or you want your, your name on the wall of fame or no. the T-shirt. No, maybe the T-shirt. T-shirts <laughs> are always worth it. Yes. But, yeah, I just I, I avoid those. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot of But I've encouraged them. You know, like I said, when I went to Bayou City Wings, we would, we would, you know, tease the bigger guys with the little waitress that would eat them. Yeah. And then laugh. At our Talk of Taco Cook-Off, which we had right here in Lamar as I missed, well. I, I had two weddings mm-hmm. that I catered that day. Yeah. Or I would have taken a trophy home. <sighs> you know, Texas Pit Stop Barbecue came in and cleaned up shop. Oh, yeah. They won every category across the board except for one they got, like, second place oh, in, wow. in chicken. And actually, the city of Dickinson had a team out here, <laughs> and they won first place in chicken. Well, um, I mean, if you're going to win against them, that's the best way to win, I guess. Yeah, and they, they ended up getting only second. But I'm going to make way. sure next year when you do it, I'm going to block that weekend off. Cool. And I'm coming out. I'm coming after Texas Pit Stop. Woo, all right. <laughs> if you go if you go in their restaurant and you, you order and you look up on the wall, you'll see the, the trophies. They're actually the cutting boards that they, right, they right. brand. And they have like, boom, 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 boom. They all say Taco Taco. I went in there the other day because I'm in there all the time, and I was like, snap that. it. I do. I love it. It has the little logo, cartoon guy. But uh, we, I was one. I had suggested at the Taco Taco Cook Off to do a taco eating contest, and that may be something we look at right. for next year. Maybe it's timed. Like, hey, who can eat, you know, can, five tacos the quickest, so that be way we're not hard forcing shell, people. Soft shell. I don't know. Those are all things we'll have lettuce, to decide. Lettuce, tomato. Yeah, we got to see. There's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of. It's a lot that goes into it, and that's what we right. discovered. So we're like, okay, let's just. Figure out if we have something that works with the taco cook-off first, right. and, and we do. And I think you guys did great with it. You know, it went so smooth. Um, you know, working with United Way, right? They they're awesome, and they you know the Chris Delasandri. Chris is awesome. Yeah, he's he's put on so many cook-offs. And so you know, he's a he can cook. That's what I've heard, and I've never had the opportunity to eat any of his barbecue, but you, he has the trophies to prove it. But he's got a better steak. Oh really? Oh yeah. Chris, are you holding <laughs> out on us? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, so right now it is 10.57. We have a couple minutes left. Talking to Chef Jimmy Graves right here in studio with Tastefully Yours, Q's Catering with the Bay Area Entertainer. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share that we haven't touched on yet? Not really. I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you guys are enjoying my food. And, you know, I'd, I'd love for the listeners to come out, give us a call, order some food, get some gumbo, hot sauce from us. All right. And can you remind everyone – you know, the websites, how to get a hold of the you, social media, number, everything. 409-916-2970. The website is tastefullyyoursevents.com. And then look for Bay Area Entertainer on Facebook, as well as Tastefully Yours Catering on Facebook. We also have Kids Cooking Club on Facebook. Please like and share that one out. That one's the one that's the nearest and dearest to me. You know, it's, just, it's great to be able to teach the kids how to cook. Yeah, to give back. And, and to see the parents. I mean, you know, we have it's a two-hour class, and we have arts and crafts. It's at a church, but it's church for the unchurched is what we call it. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't sit there and cram down Jesus. I mean, we, we want to love Jesus, but, you know, it's, it's a comfortable setting for parents that might, might not normally come to church. And then, you know, the, everybody gets to eat. It's free. Awesome. You know, um, some of the cooking classes for kids are $45 an hour or more. Yes. You know, we just, it's all a donation from us to the community. Yeah. My son, he loves to to cook. Yeah. But the issue is I don't like to clean up his mess. And so that seems like it's a great opportunity to have my son learn where I'm not, yes. like, stressing out. Right, right. You know. Well, see, my nine-year-old, she loves to cook, and she's on dish duty. Okay. So I, I don't have to worry about the dishes. See? We, we had the boy doing them. He's seven. Mm-hmm. So- Food, we, we had to take him off dish duty. I don't know if he was a genius and just didn't do him right. <laughs> <laughs> or just didn't I mean, do him right, yeah. You know, he's an A student, so he might have been a genius and said, I'm just not going to do these right. And eventually they'll get tired of rewashing everything and take me off. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah, kids are smart. Yeah, they are. Kids are smart. Uh, again, hey, thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget, like this video comment let me know have you been to the rent fest before or you would like to go and then share this video out on our facebook page if you're watching on channel 46 or listening on 99.5 fm go search khea radio hit the thumbs up give our page a like find our latest video share it out we're giving away passes we actually have six passes uh to the renaissance festival taking place right now if you want to go let me know we may pick you chef jimmy you're awesome thank you hey thank you y'all be blessed have a good day